Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're back with our third and final fight with Ate. Um, I'm in the F-16 Viper. He is going to be flying the Mirage 2000. Those of you unfamiliar with Ate from the last two videos, he is a former French Rafale pilot. And so we gave him a Mirage in the last video because the Delta wings of the Mirage closely resemble what he's used to in the Rafale. So it helps him kind of like fly the same way that he's used to. And he's going to show us what he can do here today against the Viper. Now in the last video, he kind of kicked my ass, so I'm hoping that in the Viper I can at least get some sort of redemption here. Now I'm going to link Ate's uh, channel in the video description and the pinned comments below, and uh, stick around after the fight because we're going to do a little mini interview again. Alright guys, let's get started with the video. Alright, here we go. I am in the F-16 Viper today, and Ate is in his Mirage. And we saw exactly what he could do with the Delta Wing aircraft. Uh, he's used to that coming from a Rafale, so. If you put this man into a Del Delta Wing aircraft, he uh, he does some deadly but beautiful things in it, so. And so I know you guys can't see him. He got a little bit far away, and uh, he's right up where I'm pointing the cross right now. And really, the F-16 uh, here, it is purely a raid fighter. So I need to avoid a one-circle fight wherever possible. Okay, and he's going to reverse that. He's going to try to force a one-circle here. This is exactly the Mirage does not want to rate fight a Viper. It wants to pull it into a one-circle fight here, which Ate is doing. Look at that continued nose-down attitude. That's going to give the Mirage a lot of power and it's going to be able to pull its nose through those turns. It can kind of rate fight as long as it's got that altitude. That's it, I just gave him my ass there. God, he's so good in that thing. Okay, he was he was winning that and I'm just diving to the ground here because that's the only chance I got. I got a transition to the deck here. As long as he has altitude, he can dump his nose like that and there's not much I can do. If I can drag him down here and hold him off for a couple of turns, I can kill him, maybe but up there I have no chance. Alright, so he's positioned nicely behind me, and as long as the Mirage is uh, slow speed, it has a decent amount of nose authority. So now as he tries to shoot, you see me roll out there, I'm looking for the underbelly of his aircraft to show me that he's pulling lead. When he's pulling lead, I'm going to try to get out of the way. Now you can see his nose got stuck in leg, so he's actually lagging behind me a little bit. He's going to climb, and he's going to go above. And he's going to try to use that altitude to pull his, hard, his nose hard altitude. through the circle. And he's going to try to cut my circle and kill me. Because he knows he can't raid fight me. And so I've just got to be careful of that as he comes across. You see that? There, he, he couldn't cut the circle there. He ended up behind me. So he's back to doing his vertical thing. It's only a matter of time before he gets it right and he manages to cut the circle and possibly get a snapshot opportunity. Now, unfortunately, the 30 millimeter cannon means if he hits me one time, I'm dead. So I've got to be really, really cautious here as he comes down through the top there. Here he comes. I'm going to start climbing a little bit here so he can't keep up. Okay. 
Alright, he's pretty far, I'm safe. He needs to get close to hit me with those 30 mils. Yeah, look at this, look at this. As his nose comes across, he's going to shoot. And if I climb, he's going to have a lot of trouble pulling that lead. He's bleeding off tremendous amounts of airspeed here, trying to get that shot. And so I'm back down, and I'm just going to continue raid fighting him. There's nothing I can do other than raid fight him. You know, and my speeds are fluctuating a little bit. I'm having trouble just maintaining 430. And you see those vapors just coming off his aircraft. He's pulling really hard. And that's good for me. That means he's getting slow and I'm going to start coming around the circle here. There's those rounds, those go over me, but they had enough lead, so that's a little concerning. He had to really pull hard for that, though, so I think he might be out of energy. He's so difficult to fight, man. I've never had a Mirage give me this much trouble before. Yeah, so you see he's super slow on the deck, and I'm climbing. And if I'm climbing, it's going to further reduce his speed. And now you can see me coming around the circle. Now we're turning the tables. There we go. Alright, looks like he came back. He's trying to do head-on shots. Alright, we're back to our head-on shots. I can pull a little harder than him here because he's so slow and come on that's ah, a kill Alright, now for this next fight, we're going to do something a little bit different. What you're seeing now is Ate's Mirage. He was kind enough to send over his track to me, so we're actually going to watch this fight from his perspective. So this is his Mirage, his cockpit, and I am the F-16 that he is fighting. And so this will be interesting. You know, I've never seen myself from the other guy's cockpit, so um, it's interesting. Now, uh, there's the merge. Ate is going to probably try to make this a nose position fight, a one circle fight, as expected from a delta wing aircraft. Um, I doubt he's going to try to raid fight an F-16 at this altitude especially, it's just not going to end well for him. And uh, he's smart enough to know that. And so there I go, he's going to go for the vertical here.
look at how slow he is here, about 180-ish knots. Uh, 120, 130, 140. And so you can see I'm trying to stay in the raid fight with him, and he's trying to avoid that as much as possible. Um, he may raid fight a little bit just to try to get some lead and get a shot off, but there was, there's no way he'll get into a prolonged turn fight with an F-16. You can see him here using, look at that, nose down. It's just nose down all the time. And this is really how the Mirage is going to be able to pick up speed and stuff. So you see me here trying to transition this into a vertical raid fight. And see if I can get something going like this. Now, in the fight, this actually seemed like a good idea, but now that I'm looking at it from his perspective, he's sitting inside my turn circle the entire time. It's very, very dangerous. And if he can just get close enough to me, he will easily kill me. But it just wasn't something I was noticing as I was fighting him. So you see me going back down and just pull coming back up and trying to... You can see him gaining a lot of speed. Look at this, look at this, he's getting closer. He's almost got the lead there. And I think another circle and I'm in big trouble. And I don't know why I'm not noticing this, but see, I think what I'm seeing is a really slow mirage that almost is floating in the air because he's so slow. And so I'm identifying that as a weakness. And I'm like, okay, he's just like stuck there. So I'll just raid around him until I kill him. But you have to understand that he's sitting inside your turn circle like this. And as long as he's sitting in there, He's gonna kill you, just like that. Really, really nice um, energy management from him in those turns, and well played. So he didn't even have to raid fight me. He just cut my circle and just did what the Mirage does best. What aircraft have you fought during your experience as a fighter pilot? Um, like what, what have you, I know that you said that you guys don't do a lot of um, guns only fighting because that's just not realistic. Um, so you're doing a lot of Fox 2 stuff and you know, dog fighting is always going to be with some sort of Fox 2 and uh, some sort of high off boresight training for you guys. Um, what kind of aircraft have you fought in those situations and uh, which one did you find to be the most challenging? Uh, sure, yeah. So before being assigned on the Rafale Navy, I uh, was flying Super Etendard, uh, flying the Super E. Uh, we did a 2v1 against Italian Navy Harriers. So they were being replaced by a 35, but back in those days, it was um, uh, AV8. I actually posted uh, an analyze and my, my cockpit footage on, on my YouTube channel. Um, but the big point is uh, AV8 moves extremely well and, and the the way it can move sometimes in a turn is, is impressive. So, so there was there was an interesting fight. We we're doing Fox 2 as a day. I got a kill on him, but he, he went offensive on my leader. Um, so the AV-8 was fun to fly against. Uh, follow against Mirage, of course, Alpha Jets. Alpha Jets are tricky. Uh, so for those of you that don't know the Alpha Jet, it's like the French Hawk. Um, some sort of like, or like the T-45 if you're from the US. Uh, it's a small aircraft, but because it's 
a trainer, it flies extremely slow. And if you get into a one circle fight with him, he can basically barrel roll below 100 knots. So you can't follow him. <laughs> so, so it can be tricky if you, if you tend to maintain low altitude and you get inside his, his comfort zone. So you really have to be focused on that. Um, I've fought against um, F-18s. Um, from the Marines, from the Navy, from um, uh, Switzerland, from Spain, uh, of course typhoons, Spanish typhoons, British typhoons, German typhoons, Italian typhoons, they visited us in Nordivisio in a naval air station, um, and that's most, uh, F-16, I actually did a pretty cool flight, uh, I got the picture on my website where um, you see me like doing a, th a, a, a thumb up, I've got my French and Canadian helmet because I'm, I'm dual citizen and there is a Dutch F-16 in my wing. So I'm, I'm flying in my Rafale, there is a Dutch F-16 in my wing and the pilot of that um, F-16 is an exchange pilot from the Royal Canadian Air Force. And we're flying over Normandy, it was back in 2017. So you had like a French Canadian against a Canadian in the French and a Dutch plane above Normandy and we dogfighted that day. Um, he had the fuel tanks, so with fuel tanks, the F-16 can't move as easily as it should. Um, but the F-16 is a pretty difficult aircraft to dogfight, because it's pretty small, and it's easier usually to dogfight bigger aircraft. So, so the F-16 isn't that easy to dogfight, uh, but they're extremely limited in fuel. So real life, against an F-16, they're, they're usually have uh, fuel issues pretty fast. Um, and I think that's basically mm -hmm. no no funky F-35 or F-22. Uh, Zero Force usually did the exercises against the F-22. F-35, they started um, doing operations with the French Navy, I think, last year. And my was, last flight in the service was uh, September 2017, so I missed it for, uh, for a year or two. But uh, such is life. <laughs> so I'll miss the dog fighting with the UAVs as well. <laughs> yeah, and any Russian aircraft like MiG-29, Sukhois, anything like that? Um, tuck, 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 let me um, some sub stuff. Uh, otherwise, no. I mean, no, no. Uh, sometimes you can find um, F um, GR4 uh, tornadoes, of course. Hawk. I forgot those one tornadoes. Hawk. Uh, but no Russian. Let me think. No, never against a Russian. Um, with the Navy. We I, I actually missed that stuff. Um, so we, the Navy went off the coast of India, but there was a transitioning on the Rafale at that moment, and I, I missed the exercise again, the big Sukhois. Uh, but we usually tr um, do not participate in very big exercise except from TLP in Albacete, Spain, or um, NATO Tiger Meets. Um, so outside of the Tigers squadrons, um, the only interaction we really get are along the way when we go on cruise. So it's basically um, from France to the Gulf and back, and we will interact with several countries along the way, Israelis, um, Italians, uh, stuff like that. But so, so those are basically Typhoons, F-16, sometimes F-15s, uh, but, but nothing too fancy. Um, over Iraq and Syria is a different matter, but uh, it's not really duck fighting. So, uh, a lot of people were asking um, if we could do some missile stuff. They were saying, um, you know, BVR, Fox Two, that kind of stuff. And I've had some experience talking to a couple of American pilots um, who, you know, they they stay away from the whole BVR thing and the Fox Two stuff. And obviously, that's because uh, the classified nature of the tactics and the performance of those missiles um, is that something that you stay away from as well or like what is that why, why do pilots do that is it just um, just for caution they're like i don't want to talk about that kind of stuff i don't want to say anything by accident yeah exactly so you want to like pre prevent yourself from putting yourself in a situation you don't want to be and as, as soon as you get into the fox 3 bvr beyond visual range area um, it gets tricky. So uh, most militaries, if not all, almost all the militaries in the world are now what we call Fox 3 aware. They know the tactics, understand the tactics. So if I start talking about Fox 3 tactics, really it's not going to change uh, the, <laughs> the, the, the tensions or, or, or any air force in the world. Uh, but the point is some 
documents are classified and some are open source or um, released and available online. If you look at all the BFM, so basic fighter maneuvering, 1v1, all the ACM air combat maneuvering, um, you can find the US military um, curriculums and manuals online. So it is all released as open source. So I can talk about BFM and ACM almost all, all day. I, I'll never get prosecuted because it is free to share. It is open source. It is widely available. So there is no issue. Now, we start, if I start getting into BVR, even if, let's say, the basics aren't classified, it doesn't make sense to start doing BVR tactics without the numbers, without understanding the range of the missiles. And as professional, we have been trained for hundreds of years to react at given distances. And there is absolutely no reason or no use for us to start reacting maybe at the real distances with we know or stuff we know in a virtual world and maybe giving away stuff. And, and I mean, you, you know, like all the missile range you have in the sim are off. But if you put me in a sim at some point, if I get like into the the stuff I'll see a range I know by heart and I've been trained to distance I might do it and you never know who's watching the track and it might give away information so it's I think it's really in that position you don't want to put yourself in right. a position where you might share information that might be used that you don't want to give away it, it's really there is a lot of stuff to do with BFM ACM I have more much more fun flying BFM ACM and what where I want to go with um Maybe with the next flight, stuff like that, is more in the old school Fox 2. So if we get into 9 Lima or Magic 1 or, you know, that type of area, like um, between the, mm -hmm. around the Falklands, uh, I think that, that's really where, as a fighter pilot, it's basically the limit where you can go. Uh, just basic old Fox 2. You still have to do all the geometry, put yourself in a good offensive position, but you're going to be shooting at less than a mile. And those kind of tactics we can discuss all days, and it's really documented in the books anyway. Um, but getting into how you're going to start to do a beam deploy and do the jamming, all that stuff. A lot of people ask me, how do you jam, do that stuff? Never, I'll never get into that. <laughs> uh, so just to touch on this BVR thing, I just want to clarify for people that are listening, maybe they don't understand what you meant by that. Um, like in DCS, we have AMRAM numbers. We know the minimum abort ranges. We know um, the range that it can hit at a given altitude in DCS. And obviously those numbers are not correct because those numbers are classified. So DCS doesn't have access to them. So if I'm playing DCS and I know that, you know, the abort range at 40,000 feet is 30 miles for an MRAM in DCS, in real life, hypothetically, I have no idea, it might be 70 miles. And if you're a real pilot and, you know, you're, you're playing DCS and then... <gasps> I have to kill you now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did I get that right on? <laughs> Say hypothetically it's 70 and then you, you know, you're playing DCS and all of a sudden you start defending at 70 and you don't know if like, you know, some adversary country is watching that track and they're like, oh, why is he defending at 70? Oh, he knows like real AMRAM numbers and then you have a whole issue on your hands. That's exactly it. So yeah, very well put. And uh, exactly. <laughs> and on the side note, and that's good on DCS players, being able to do BVR tactics mean being very proficient with the radar and all the procedures. And honestly, I don't have time to get to train. <laughs> so uh, I think that's everything, man. That's all I had. I really appreciate you coming out. I'm sure you're super tired right now. No worries. And uh, I'm going to let you go. I'm not going to hold you too much longer. Thank you, man. Thanks. Thanks, brother. Bye. All right, guys, here we go with our attack view. This is going to be the one where I kill Ate, and only because, even though I win, he does some really masterful stuff here that I kind of wanted to show off. And uh, in the, the one where he beats me, I just, I'm an idiot, and I'm just trying to right fight him, and he's inside my turn circle. There's not a whole lot to talk about there. But in this one, there should be some interesting things. So, um, here is the merge. Uh, the classic merge from Ate, he goes for the vertical. Um, I'm trying to force the rate fight. Now as I come down here, I actually get a little bit faster than I would like. I'm um, getting about 600 knots, which is way too fast. But uh, then we got the climb here. He actually stays out of my gun sight, you can tell. 
He's trying to stay out of there. Does a nice job of that. Immediately reverses the turn, right? As he reverses the turn here, he's forcing a one circle, which is not where I want to be. I want to be raid fighting him. This is going to turn into a nose position fight. It's not where I want to be against the Mirage, especially not in a Viper. If I was on a Hornet, maybe, you know? Um, but you can see immediately I'm in trouble because I actually took the bait on the one circle. <laughs> this is where I just decide, I'm just like, oh shit. You know, I noticed I made a mistake here, right here. I was like, damn it. You know, he forced the one circle and then I'm an idiot and I actually turned back into him. I have no idea why I did this, not a clue. But uh, we got back into another one circle. And so he starts, at this point, I'm just like, all right, this is, I'm done for if I don't get out of here. So I just start diving. You see me kind of twisting and turning. I'm trying to just not let him get a gunshot. And uh, I'm just trying to drag it down to the deck where I can possibly raid fight him. And I want to take away this altitude advantage, not advantage, but like option that he has, you know, because as long as the Mirage can dump its nose, um, he can pull hard through turns. And so that's going to make it very, very dangerous for me. So if I can drag him down to the deck, he can't do that anymore. And so I get him down here. You see me just, I'm watching him the whole time. And as I see him pulling the lead right here, right, I'm rolling out. There's the shots going high. And so here, actually, he comes pretty close. And so my little, I don't want to even call it an out of plane maneuver, but my little, I don't even want to call it a jink, but I try to move a little bit just so he can't shoot me. It was a little late because he almost hit me. And so this is the part, this is the part that gets interesting. Now, he knows that he can't, he can't do this turn with me. There's no way that a Mirage can turn with a Viper like that. And he already knows that. So what he's going to do, he's going to climb and he's going to wait. Now while he climbs, I'm going to come around the circle here. He's going to pull hard through the top of that and he's going to try to get a snapshot opportunity as I go by here. And he's going to try to kill me like this. This is what he's trying to do instead of raid fighting me. It's actually quite genius. And so I noticed that and I'm like, all right, you know what? Like I'll let him do it because I don't really know what else I could do. And I'm like, I can just, uh, I can just defend it as he comes down. And that's, so you can see that's essentially exactly what he's trying to do, but he's just mistiming it ever so slightly. Right. And only that is because he's not used to this mirage and all that. Um, had we done this exact same fight again, a second time, I guarantee you, he would have got that perfectly and he would have killed me. And so here you can see him pulling tremendous amounts of lead and he's inside of my turn circle. It's very bad. And so once again, he realizes that he's not going to be able to do it. And so he pulls out. And he's really, really fast. That's another thing. Like when the Mirage is, you know, above 400 knots, it's hard to make the nose come around. It's got to be slower. So he's got that problem as well. And so once again, he goes for the same strategy. Go ahead and decrease some of these lines. Okay. So same strategy, and you can see this time it almost actually works. It almost works. He's off by like a few degrees. You know, he's getting better and better. And so it's getting really dangerous. And once again, he's sitting inside my turn circle. So I just dump the nose. And so here I'm like, all right, if I can, i see, here's the thing. I didn't know that he was. Well, he's about 300, so it makes sense. He's a truer speed of 403 is probably an indicator of about 300. So I start to pull up because if I if I stay down here, he can dump his nose and gravity will pull him through that turn and he'll be able to pull the lead he needs to kill me. So I climb so that he has to fight gravity to point his nose, which is going to make him slower and then he won't be able to pull the lead he needs to hit me. And with the 30 millimeter rounds, because they're so heavy, you have to pull a tremendous amount of lead. And so that's really all I'm hoping for here. And 
during this entire thing, I'm like, I'm defending and I'm trying to think to myself like, okay, how am I going to turn this table? You know, like he's just going to, we could do this all day long. You know, he's so good at it. He's not fighting my fight, so I, I, I can't kill him. And um, so you can see here, he's finally got his lead. And he's getting those rounds off and they're actually coming kind of close. Those ones went high. And look at this lead. Look at the lead that he has to pull. And he is using the radar gun sight. Okay, look at this. This is insane amounts of lead to get a 30 mil to land on an F-16. Like, he's pointing his nose here. You know, anything else, like say a Hornet that was fighting, that was shooting uh, the 20 millimeters, would probably be leading about here. Which actually makes a tremendous amount of difference in these high aspect shots, which... Uh, Ate is trying to take here. And so once again, same thing. I'm like, all right, we'll just... This whole time, I'm just thinking to myself, like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? So then I'm just like, all right, I'll just stay up here instead of going down all the time. And if I do that, you know, I, I, it's essentially I'm stacking high on him, sort of. And so he actually comes down here and he reverses the turn in order... Because I think he also realizes that, like, well, we could do this all day. So he he returns, he uh, reverses the turn here and forces these head-on shots. And essentially he's made this into a one-circle fight again, right? And I came this way. Instead of him coming this way, he would have turned this way and I would come from behind and we would still be... I mean, it would still be a raid fight, but this is like a nose position fight here. So he's basically forced a head-on shot. And... You can see he actually comes really close to hitting me here. And I miss him. Almost hit the ground in the process. Pull out in time, come back around. And I'm pulling really, really hard here to try to come around. And you can see I'm pulling 22.4 degrees a second. He's pulling 18.8. .8. So I'm really pulling hard here. And I'm just trying to line him up in that shot. I don't want him to get his nose around. And right here. And so he can't actually jink because he's so slow. You know, he's a true airspeed of 172. And that's it. Okay, well, that is the tag view. Um, thank you all for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Big thank you to Ate for coming out and doing these fights with us. I think we all learned a lot. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and don't forget to check out his channel. The links will be in the pinned comment and the video description below. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.